Welcome to the video on the concept of minimum viable product or MVP and its significant role in product development. The dynamic nature of today's market means that the time to effectively push new product to the market is continually shrinking. When it comes to technology applications, a few decades ago you might have had several months or even years from when a new product is released till the point in time when the competition catches up with their response. Nowadays, that time has often shrunk to several weeks. MVP comes into play there as a strategic approach that can truly transform the way we bring ideas to life. It shifts the focus from product to experience and as a positive side effect towards the creation of customer relationships that beat the competition. You can steal my ideas, but not my relationships. If you Google images on minimum viable product, your results will be flooded with this drawing which was drawn by Henrik Knipek about a decade ago. The drawing appears all over the place, mainly describing agile development. You are unlikely to find a better representation of an MVP as the drawing captures the essence of what MVP delivers in a minimalist way. The picture is an oversimplified analogy of product development. The top row is an example of how not to deliver results of iterative product development using a big bang delivery. The example shows how many projects work on the development of products until they are fully completed and deliver the outcome at the very end for validation and verification. The logic of delivering products in such a way is that nobody wants to see the half-finished product or in this case a front tire or a car chassis if they expect to see a car. So customers see nothing usable by them until the final version of the product is available for feedback. As a customer is faced with the product, there's little or no room for iterative improvement. Their feedback could sometimes simplify to just yes or no. If you're lucky, the customer is happy with their product and you can move on. However, as you had no chance to test the product with the customer, your product might be based on a series of assumptions about customer needs. At the end of the day, as anyone who have ever designed any product knows, customers are often not aware of their real needs or desires. Letting them define a series of requirements and then facing them with a product design based on those requirements can be a daunting experience. So the smiley face at the top right corner of the full picture is quite idealistic. What is missing in this approach is the absence of a feedback loop. The second approach, depicted at the bottom row of the original picture, ignores what the customer believes that they might need. Instead, we focus on customers' underlying needs, even if they might not be fully aware of them. As it happens, the underlying need is to get from point A to point B faster than by walking, and a car is the most obvious choice for the customer to satisfy that need. So the team delivers the simplest possible solution that could allow the customer to make that point A to point B journey. The product that is delivered is called an MVP. In my world of electronic instrument development, that is a box with loose hanging wires and relatively unstable performance that lets the customer sense what could possibly follow. The delivered product is the first iteration that could be tested to sense how the customer feels about the experience of traveling from point A to point B. They are least likely to be excited about your product. Instead, at this point, we are simply trying to learn more about customers' underlying needs. The key here is to gather as much customer feedback as possible to be able to improve the product with every iteration. To get to the point of being able to gather that feedback, the question is, what is the least expensive and fastest way to gather first customer feedback? With every iteration, you either solve the issues that were raised in your last round of feedback, or you learn more about them. Also, every iteration might reinstate customers' belief in how much they want a car, which is totally fine. In the meantime, by allowing them to use these earlier simple products, they give us even more feedback. As we move from the first skateboard to the second scooter, we solve the stability issue. Then we move 
towards the push bike to let them travel longer distances using bigger wheels and to let them experience the usage of brakes. Their feedback could be that they like the sense of fresh air flowing down their faces as they move around. If it turns out that the bicycle is all that the customer needs, they have just saved a lot of time, money and effort in developing a car. The story of this product could be cut a lot shorter. On the other hand, if the product is not enough as the customer needs to travel long distances, then you add an engine to your product and you deliver a motorbike. The next round of feedback in the following iteration could deliver the exact same product as the one that we would deliver had we followed customer requirements. However, through this iterative approach, we are likely to gain deeper insights into customers' needs and may end up with a better product. The customer is more likely to be satisfied with the final result as we deliver a better product than originally planned. In this case, that is an open-top car, which lets the customer feel the fresh air on their face as they drive from point A to point B. That is assuming that it is not raining, in which case you need to also include removable roof. That is something you also learn through iterations. You need to keep in mind that the car is just an analogy or a metaphor and it can represent any customer product development situation. You need to figure out what is your skateboard equivalent. Then you deliver your representation of that prototype and let the customer play so that you get the feedback. You can learn and improve. In the end, you can also create a lot of better customer relationships. The essence of the story of an MVP is its benefits over conventional Big Bang delivery. These include clear focus on developing key features, fast validation track of hypotheses and assumptions we make about customers' needs, mitigation of risks due to an early discovery of differences between what you are developing and what the market really needs, learning and iteration from the feedback about the product to market, efficient usage of resources as you only develop what is needed, cutting on the waste. A lot speedier time to market, as you have a faster method of discovering the needed functionalities, customer-centric development, and resulting improved relationships. If that sounds too theoretical, let's consider some examples that we all know about. Amazon Bookstore was Amazon's MVP that was based on delivering books published by other companies. In one of the following iterations, publishers were listing their books on Amazon's website. As time went by, Amazon became what it is today, most likely without being envisaged in that shape or form when it was first formed. Facebook's original MVP was a platform for connecting students at Harvard University. As time went by, Facebook turned into a global social media platform that seriously outgrew its original scope. Airbnb's MVP was a website that offered an airbed in San Francisco apartment. Regular iterations have turned Airbnb into a real disruptor of the hospitality industry that provides information on restaurants, events, along with feedback and ratings. Other examples include Dropbox, Instagram, Spotify, and many more. What MVP teaches us is that where you plan to go and your actual destination might considerably differ from each other. The customer centers perspective allows organic growth that would otherwise be out of reach of one's imagination. In conclusion, the strategic application of MVP allows us to unlock the power of fast validation that is done using minimal resources. It helps us build long-lasting customer relationships. By focusing on core functionalities and integrating customer feedback, we evolve assets and relationships that are true responses to customer needs. So on that note, go and experiment.